What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Today we're taking a look at lightsaber effects because who doesn't want to learn lightsaber effects? So what we're going to be creating in today's video is this. And the reason I wanted to do this video, one, because lightsabers are cool, but two, because we're gonna be introducing a new feature in Fusion, well, not new, but new to you guys, which is called a custom controller, a really useful node built inside of Fusion to create things like this that you can save off as presets to use in different videos. So I think it's a really valuable lesson. Also, the first visual effects I ever made was a lightsaber in After Effects like 10 years ago, so, it's, this is a tutorial that I've always wanted to make, so should be pretty fun. That being said, if creating effects isn't your thing, head on over to my Cellfire store, link in the first line of the description. I have my own lightsaber.settings file there that you can download and add to your Fusion library, so you can just use that one if you want. But if you wanna learn how to create your own, stick around and let's get into it. All right guys, so first off, before we start matching this lightsaber effect to footage, we're gonna build the effect in Fusion. So we're gonna jump over to Fusion. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go new Fusion composition and we're just gonna call it lightsaber. And for now, leave it at five seconds. It's not super important how long this particular one goes for. Open it up so we have our media out node. So let's close the media pool and let's start building the effect by dragging a background node and connecting it to the media out so we can see it. And we're gonna make this background white and we're going to use a mask paint tool. So shift space, mask paint, hit enter to draw our lightsaber. To do this, we're gonna shift over to the polyline stroke, click that and what we're gonna do is just click once and then shift click another spot. Straight away, we have our line and what we wanna do now is in the brush controls, Although we want it soft, we don't want it super soft because we're gonna have a glow effect that creates uh, that softness anyway. The softer it gets, the, um, the less white it is in the center. So we want it pretty, yeah, we'll go, let's go there. Let's go 0.4 for the softness. And let's just rename this background node to the light saber. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to hit shift space and add a glow. So we're gonna go glow, and we're gonna add the middle one and go add. What we're gonna do as well, just so we can see what's going on is we're gonna quickly just add a black background and we'll delete this later. This is just so that we know exactly what we're seeing and just make sure once you've merged it together that the background is in the background and the glow is in the foreground, like so. So now we can see what we're actually working with. What we're gonna do with the glow is we're gonna adjust a few parameters to begin with, okay? So we're going to change the spread and we're gonna lower the spread down a fair amount because we don't need it all the way out there. We're gonna have a glow in two sections. So the first section is going to be very, very strong. So let's start off with the color red and we're gonna have it right up here. Have the spread out just a little bit, but not a whole lot. And then with the shine threshold, we're gonna bring that down a little bit. And you notice that the color starts to come through the more we bring it down and it dissipates the more we bring it up. So we're gonna bring that down quite a ways. Next, we're gonna bring the brightness up just a little bit. So now it's starting to, now we're starting to get somewhere. And we're also going to adjust the horizontal and vertical ratio, which is this slider here. And we're just gonna bring it down a little bit. What that does is it brings the glow in a little bit on the horizontal and extends it a bit on the vertical. We only wanna do it a little bit. Otherwise, if we go like right to the other extreme, we get this weird line. So we're just bringing it in just a little bit south. And that's just so we get a little bit more glow on the outside there. Next, we're going to actually duplicate this glow layer. So we're gonna just, or we can just shift space and add another one. With this one, we're going to actually change the color to more of a middle of the line pink rather than a strong red. We're going to, again, change the horizontal and vertical ratio. We're going to lower the spread, but this time we want the spread, we want it to be a little bit more spread out than the other color. Again, we're gonna bring the shine threshold down a little bit. And so what we've done is we've added like a uh, secondary glow effect here, just so it expands a little bit, 
gives a bit more of a dissipating effect. I think that works really, really well. Far as uh, the sort of blade itself goes, that's pretty much all we're going to do. So now we're gonna shift over here and grab the mask paint node. And we're going to select this point up the top here. We're gonna hit shift P. And what that does is publish the point. So the slow way to do that is to right click, go down to polyline one, polyline stroke one polyline and go publish, publish points. So shift P, we're just going to move down to the bottom. We're gonna do the same thing here on that point there and hit shift P. And if we head on over to the inspector for the mask paint node, scroll right to the bottom. Now you see that we have point zero and this should say point one, but anyway, mine's a bit messed up at the moment. And these correspond to the top points of the blade. And these are the points that we're going to use to control this lightsaber. So let's delete this background and merge and connect it all together. Now that we've seen how they glow, the only reason we did that is because it's easier to judge the glow on a black background rather than this. So the next node we're going to add is what's called a custom control. So hit shift space and type in custom and you got a, sorry, custom tool. And we're gonna add that to the scene and just shift drag that on the line there. And what a custom tool is, is basically it does nothing by default, but you can link other parameters from other nodes to it. And then all of a sudden you have this single node that controls everything you want it to, which is good for animating, especially effects like this, so that you don't have to go into the mask paint to animate. What we're gonna do is we're going to use point in one and point in two, and that's gonna control the top and bottom position of our lightsaber. Then our number in one is going to control the growth of the lightsaber and number in two is gonna control the sort of hue of the color of the blade. So what we're gonna do is with the custom tool selected, head on over to the configuration panel and we're gonna to go to number points and we only wanna show point one and two because that's the only ones we're going to use. And straight away, once you've selected those, if you go straight over to the controls, you'll notice that all those numbers have disappeared. Now we just have point in one and point in two, and we can rename these. So we can go top blade position, and then we can rename this one bottom blade position. Next, we want to change the number controls. And again, we only want to have two of them available. So we're going to disable all of these and we're gonna rename the first one Blade Growth. And we're gonna name the second one Blade Color. All right, now that this tool is fully set up to everything that we need to control, we can start linking it. So what I want you to do is with the custom tool selected, I want you to pin it. And by pinning it, it means that when we jump across into different variables, if we scroll down, we still have our custom tool there. We're also gonna drop the inspector of the whole way down because we do need that real estate. So what we're going to do is we're gonna head on over to the mask paint tool and we are going to go to where the stroke controls are. Now, make sure you know which one is the top, which one the bottom is. If you've done it the same way I have, then point zero will be the top, point one, or in my case, point two, that's just because it wouldn't work, it will be the bottom. And we're gonna double click in the first value and we're gonna hit the equal sign to create an expression to hit enter or return. And once you've got your expression, we're going to drag the plus sign. We're going to drag it to the top blade position. And we're going to release and hit enter. Next, we're going to do the exact same for point two. So we're going to hit equals to create an expression. Return. With the expression, what we're going to do is drag that down and just release on bottom blade position and hit enter. And what we have now is if we move these, because I'm currently they're on the exact same position, but if we select the custom tool, so now we have these two points that we can keyframe and animate that's gonna control our lightsaber position. Next, we wanna do a similar process to connect the blade growth and color. So the growth tool is gonna to connect to the stroke controls. So we're gonna drop those down. We're going to connect it to the right on effect of the blade. So again, all we need to do is double click in that box, hit equals, expression window pops up, all we're going to do is grab that plus sign and we're going to link it to blade growth and hit enter. Now what you'll find is we now have a slider that if we drag, drops the saber down, zero, and then it's gonna come out and now we can ignite our blade. So we're gonna reset that. And now we wanna do the color. Now to do the color, because we've used two glow nodes to control different sort of patches, so we've got a light, red for the outer glow, then we've got a deeper red for the inner glow. 
What I'm actually gonna do is create a color corrector after the second glow. So select the second glow node, hit shift space, type in color, and we're gonna add a color corrector and just hit enter. And right now we don't need to do anything, but we do wanna select the color corrector node and we're actually going to add an expression to the hue value. Double click in the hue, hit equals. And then when your little expression window comes down, you're gonna click the plus and drag it to the blade color and hit enter. Now with the custom tool, if we adjust the blade color, you notice that our lightsaber now changes color as we slide it along and it looks pretty, pretty awesome as we do so. And really that's pretty much there, all there is to this effect. All we wanna do now is let's rename this custom tool so we can just right click on it, rename and go blade controls. And to clean up the node tree, we can sh drag select all the nodes that come before it, hit command or control G to group them together. And we can rename this group as well. And so now we have this super clean node tree because everything's graphed up. And then all we need to do is animate in our blade controls and we can keyframe these into position. And that's what we're going to do next. But first, you're obviously going to want to save this out so you can use it at your own discretion. To do that, we're going to drag select both. We're going to right click, go settings, save all as. And this is going to save a dot setting file that we can use to import into DaVinci Resolve. Now we have our lightsaber dot setting. Let's add it to the folder. So we're going to find the source location for DaVinci Resolve. For me, that's under applications, DaVinci Resolve. And then you go show package contents, contents, resources, Fusion, templates, Fusion, it's a big thing. But here we can now create our folder. So I can create a new folder and call this VFX elements, drag my dot settings into that folder. And if we reopen DaVinci Resolve, we can use that now at our discretion. So back in DaVinci Resolve, so we're gonna open this footage up of me with the thing and we're gonna just hit an in point and just drag this down onto the timeline so we can bring it into Fusion. Hover over it and jump across into Fusion so we have our clip, awesome. Now we just need to drag our effect in and if we go to the effects library, we go to templates, you're gonna notice that folder I just created, VFX elements, click on it, we've got our lightsaber. We can drag that down into our viewer and close everything down and I can just merge it on top very easily by dragging the output onto the merge and now we just need to position the start and end point. So it's pretty simple. So let's go to the very first frame of this animation, drag the bottom point to just below my hand and let's change the color because red does, let's go blue. And literally now we're just going to keyframe top position, bottom position and use a method called divide and conquer. So you set a keyframe at the start and then once you've keyframed that, then to div you divide that, so you go to the middle. Same thing. And vice versa, now we go in the middle of those. So I'm just gonna go through and do that now. That all animated, and it is a bit of a finicky process. The longer you spend on it, the better result you're gonna get. What we're gonna do is select the merge node and we're gonna go to the settings and just add motion blur. So that's gonna blur the animation and we can adjust the settings if we want, but we're gonna leave it like that for now. Jump across and see what our final result looks like. So there you go guys, so it's not super complicated. The biggest, the hardest part there is obviously setting up the custom controller to do what you want. But once you have and you've saved it out, this thing is just super, super powerful. And and hopefully learning how that custom controller works has given you some sort of ideas, gotten those cogs turning on what you could use it for. I love using the custom controller for effects like this that you're probably gonna use over and over again. It saves you having to go into the node tree and adjust settings. I think it's a super powerful tool and one you guys definitely need to know about. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you smash the thumbs up button so I can keep bringing you more lessons like this. Subscribe for, obviously, more lessons. And uh, until next video, see ya.